All right, what's up, YouTube? We're gonna go over um, a rifle build. You're, yeah, I'm sorry. And uh, what's what's going on with this? This is a CBA Scout 4570. Uh, I put this together over. It took about 25, 30 minutes to actually put all this together, but it's been in the works for a couple of years, debating on which which gun would be kind of your one and done kind of rifle, serve all, do all. Um, obviously a single shot rifle isn't going to be your, your serve all, but specifically this weapon system here uh, is designed, and what I'm naming it is the Off Mod 45 Bobber. And what that stands for is because this is the Ozark Frontierman channel. It stands for the Ozark Frontierman Modified 45, because the 4570 Bobber Bear Over Bait Rifle. Um, so some of the stuff that's been modified, as you can tell, it's got the uh, the bear tooth um, butt stock cover. It's a shim kit. That way, when you're on your gun, you can get completely comfortable. I can relax all the way and my eyes are naturally going down that scope. I don't got to crane my neck any direction or come off of the buttstock to get through my scope where I can see. Uh, I've got the camo wrap on it. Uh, what that does, obviously, it breaks up the outline of a, of a black rifle out in the woods. It doesn't look natural at all. So it, it breaks up the outline. It kind of conceals it a little bit, and it also dampens sound. So if you're in a deer stand, a metal deer stand, or walking through the brush or something you don't get a metallic clink if your barrel brushes up against something that sounds completely unnatural to deer or whatever um, like i said this is bear over bait rifle this is put together specifically for pursuing bear in idaho um, i'm going with an outfitter this next spring uh, so the range is going to be 60 to 120 yards roughly uh, coming from the outfitter talking about uh, average shot on a bear so I don't need you know sub MOA accuracy out of this rifle um, this one will punch its own bullet hole out to 100 yards surprisingly from a straight wall cartridge like this but um, it's definitely got the knockdown power if you will um, and you can see on the side of the receiver there there is a two round holder velcro to the side i got that from short action precision they got a lot of good gear uh, if you want to check them out uh, the scope on there thinking about optics you know bear over bait uh, they normally come in around last light and obviously you know the majority of them there are color phase bears out there but the majority of them are going to be black fur so if you've got dense woods pocket normally where bait goes uh, where they set up the bear baits, I'm not 100% sure. It's probably just in a brush pile somewhere, but it's probably going to be in an area where they're going to feel comfortable coming in. So you're going to have trees, you're going to have shadow, shade, black fur on the bear, and black crosshairs in a low light, last light of the day shooting situation. So what I've done is I've opted for an illuminated reticle. That way I can get that contrast of red crosshairs against black fur in a shadowy environment. So you're not sitting there wondering exactly where you're aiming on this bear. Um, a lot of people, you know, go back and forth. And go, what's, what's the best caliber for, for black bear? Uh, everything that I've read, nine times out of ten, if it works on a white-tailed deer, it's going to work on a bear. Uh, so just a little bit of, you know, some, some mods for for doing that like the illuminated reticle just to help your your point of aim and get you in the middle of the middle and behind the shoulder a little um, is what a lot of people seem to seem to talk about so shot placement being your your foremost uh, goal here this one's able to achieve that uh, CVA barrels uh, this one the scout model I don't know if it's all CVA rifles but I've heard that a lot of their barrels are being made by Bergera now, so you're getting Bergera precision and ergonomics in the weapon system for half the cost. In this case, this rifle was 325 bucks at a local gun store. Everything on this rifle put together, minus the bog pod, 
I'm hovering just under $800. So not bad for a setup for doing something like that. It's kind of a budget friendly type of type of gun. Uh, but the other thing is you, you might be able to see here is this foregrip on the rifle. This is actually uh, an M-Lock style foregrip. It's designed for an AR-15. Um, what I had to do is take this, this four inch stock off, drill two holes, wall them out a little bit for because the, the M lock locking internal nuts are like a like a teardrop shape style for locking in the M lock. So you can't just drill a straight hole, it won't recess in all the way. So these are have been wallered out at a at almost a teardrop shape. That way those nuts can recess inside the stock, getting the most threads out of the bolts that anchor it into it. And then of course wrapping around it just gives that a little bit of a soft cushion. You're not gonna get a metallic clink if you uh, rush up against something. But what this essentially is doing is it's giving me a forward grip to help stabilize the weapon if you're shooting offhand. And you also got this front porch out some serrations to it. And there's a little bit of a, almost a serration type feel right here. So if you got gloves on, sweating from hiking up the mountain to get to the bear bait or, or whatever. But this is kind of a taco two for one deal. Uh, I get a I get a rest, a forward grip, and with this here, it kind of doubles as a uh, as a barricade stop. So if you're going through the woods, and like if you spot if you spot a bear or a deer or elk or whatever, and you need to hastily rest that rifle against something, and you don't have a tripod or a bipod, I can push this up against. You know, if you've ever been out west hunting in the mountains, you know that there's deadfalls everywhere. Um, it's probably one of the worst obstacles in western hunting is, is stepping around all these deadfalls. So if you if you needed to, you could get down. You could put this this portion against a log and lean into your gun to st help stabilize it without having to have a tripod or a bipod or something like that. Of course, you can also rest it on your pack. And if you're doing what you should be doing, you should be going a hard to a soft contact surface to help cradle the rifle and rest it to help minimize wobbly support. Just like you don't go bone to bone if you're kneeling, you go bone to muscle to get that hard to soft contact surface for a more stable shooting platform. So this, this kind of eliminates some of that. I know it'd be hard to hard contact surface, but you're also able to lean into the gun. So it's gonna help stabilize that a little better than not. Uh, so that's the reason behind that. Uh, get this put back in here on those rounds just so I can walk away. But uh, it's a variable power. This goes from one or uh, three to nine. It's the Athlon Neos. This is actually the muzzleloader scope. Uh, so fairly cheap optic, but it has the ability to do a zero stop. Uh, once you get it zeroed, if you want to lock it, you know, spin your turrets back to zero, um, you can't do that. You can set it zero stop. That way, if you need to make an adjustment for whatever reason, uh, you can do that, but you can always come right back to zero for whether you zero for 50 yards, bear over bait, and thick brush, or hunting in the Ozark Hills for white tailed deer. You can always come back from a hunt out west where your shots are going to be further. You come back in here where the average shot is 50, crank it back to your zero stop. You're back to being zeroed at 50 yards. Um, especially something like this got a trajectory like a freaking rainbow. Uh, you don't got to worry about you know being being too high and high shouldering something where you know you may miss the lungs and the spine and have them run for days on end. Uh, that's pretty much pretty much the gist of this rifle. Uh, everything that I've put into it, of course, like a single shot, you know, I put the double shell holder on there from short action precision. That way, if I need to, I've got two rounds at my disposal right there, right where that breech opens. So it's, it should be a quick reload. And obviously, something like this, you're going to want to practice with. Do some reloading drills. Um, and one thing I would like to talk about on this video, and we can make a short video down the road, but... Um, for a hunting scenario, 
especially on something like a bear that has the potential to turn and charge on you after <clears throat> after a cold bore shot. Uh, a drill that I do with my kids, my wife, and myself is everybody knows you know your your cold bore shot's going to be different than shooting a grouping exercise out of a warm barrel. So the exercise I like to do to confirm, you know, that ammo that's in there right now is the Buffalo Bore Barnes TSX bullet. Um, they're out of Salmon, Idaho. Again, Idaho seems to be the, the thing I'm on right now. But um, the, the drill I do is you get a cold bore zero with your scope and rifle and you group the ammo so you find out which ammo groups the tightest. Now with that ammo, what, what I like to do uh, to maintain accuracy and that I'm hunting with the right ammunition is I will wait 30, 45 minutes and let the barrel cool completely down. And then I will take a shot at a hundred yards or whatever range you're going to be typically shooting at in your situation. Shoot a cold bore round and then quickly, as Peter Capstick would say, pay the insurance make that second follow-on shot a lot of people say you know with elk and moose and bear you know shoot till they're down so for accuracy on a target cold bore shot immediate reload a secondary follow-up shot to see what that grouping looks like from a cold bore to a hot bore two round grouping exercise uh, maybe hopefully that will help some people out there if you don't know what a cold bore zero is uh, we can we can have a video on that. There, I'm sure there's a thousand videos out there on YouTube talking about how to do all this kind of stuff with more precision-based rifles. But that just that just kind of like drives the point home for me that this ammo performs that test well, and I know it groups well out of a warm barrel. Um, so I I feel 100% confident taking taking that ammunition into a hunt where you got a potential for game to run either miles away from camp like on an elk hunt if you're already miles in you don't want that elk to run another mile down a draw and slide and die down at the bottom of a river where you've got you know a day's worth of packing out you want that animal to drop quickly just as an ethical hunter situation uh, and then on you know stuff like bear you don't want to go into brush after a wounded bear or something so you want to you want to know that your ammunition and your rifle is going to perform and that you practice you know not just firing around and watching them run off you want to get back on your gun stay on your gun and shoot and make sure that you get an ethical kill so that's just an exercise i came up with like i said i run with the kids and the wife uh, just to help them be more precise and and lethal and achieve the ultimate goal of providing meat for the family so any questions or comments about anything on here anything else anybody would like to see let me know thanks for watching